We believe in his teachings. We believe that he came with a message to worship God Almighty and to believe that the path is to believe in God. And obviously, if you believe, then you will do good deeds. But we cannot say that the path to forgiveness is through breaking one of God's first commandments. Even as a human being, that's like our mother consistently saying, don't hit your brother. Now, isn't killing a lot worse than hitting your brother? Isn't killing your brother a lot worse than hitting your brother? So this is like your mother constantly saying all through the years, don't hit your brother. Don't hit your brother. And then one day, right in front of your mother, you come and you crack your brother right in the nose and you make him bleed. And then your mother says, oh, good job. That's what I really wanted you to do. I wanted you to really crack your brother in the nose because that's what makes me happy. You see how how you, you can't say that even to a human being. How can we say that about God Almighty? This is why God Almighty, the sin, the sin in Islam of association with God is the worst sin because you're putting you're putting something onto the Creator that is evil because the act of killing an innocent is an evil act. And if you believe that the Creator requires that evil act in order to be forgiven, that means you're putting that requirement onto the Creator, meaning you're saying that God Almighty requires evil in order to be forgiven. That is a deception of the shaitan. That's why the original message of Jesus, peace be upon him, has been twisted and people can't see it. Jesus, peace be upon him, he never wore the cross because the cross represents a torture device. Jesus, peace be upon him, never wore it. We want to emulate the path. We want to emulate the walk of the prophets. Remember, in order to find the salvation, you have to know where you're going and you have to walk in that direction. The prophets and the messengers showed us how to walk. They showed us the direction and how to walk. And in Islam, it is codified because Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is the seal of the prophets. The Quran testifies to the miracles of Jesus, peace be upon him. In fact, the Quran mentions Jesus, peace be upon him, more than it does Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Islam, because it's 1400 years ago, the book was revealed that testifies to Jesus' miracles, peace be upon him. Also to the messages of all the prophets behind, before him. But it's been memorized through generation to generation. And the original Arabic you could still refer to. And we can't refer to that. The Gospels of John, Mark, Luke, these all happened after Jesus. These were all the according to's, the, the Gospel according to's. These were all the, the written perceptions of the people regarding the life of Jesus. I'm interested to know what Jesus said. I don't want to know what somebody thought he said. I want to know what did Jesus say. This is my soul that I'm talking about here. This is your soul you're talking about here. This is where you're going. This is the direction, the path, the source that you're going towards. Don't you want to know with all truth? And don't you want to know with all conviction? All determination, where you're going? Does it make sense that a God that is all merciful, that has forgiven people in the past, that has said, the path to my forgiveness is to acknowledge me, have no other gods before me, that I am a jealous God, all of these things, does it make sense that he would then change the message and say, no, 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 I need you to kill an innocent to be forgiven? It sounds nice, you know, it really sounds nice. It sounds like really kind of cool that you say, well, Jesus came to, to die for my sins. That's kind of, wow, isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing? But, but let's look at it in context. Let's look at it in proper context. What father, what father, what human father would not die for their child? Any of you fathers or mothers out there, or even if you're a brother or a sister, if someone was going to take a gun 
and pointed at your sister or your mother or your father or your daughter or son and you had the choice, wouldn't any of you say, hey, take me instead? Well, then is this a godlike thing to do? Can you say that you're above God? Can you say that you can you could compare yourself with God? God is the Almighty. This is even a human trait, a human ability to sacrifice. How can you say that we have the ability or aptitude or that we have the determination that God would have or the Son of God would have? Astaghfirullah. This is the this is the problem. This is the problem that all of a sudden God has been brought down to the level of a human being. God Almighty, as our Creator, He doesn't have that restriction on Him. You can't restrict Him. And you cannot say He's anything like us. In Islam, we say, قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدُ اللَّهُ الصَّمَدُ لَمْ يَلِدْ وَلَمْ يُلَدْ وَلَمْ يَكُلُّهُ كُفُوًا أَحَدُ he is unlike any of his creation. And he has said that to us in the other scriptures, the Bible and the Old Testament. He said that none have seen the glory of God. That none have seen the glory of God. So isn't these things, aren't these things horrible to do? To actually, to actually require God, require him to, to, to say that he's encouraging evil in order for salvation. It sounds nice, I know, when you say, but one is that it's a, it's a human attribute. We we have the power to sacrifice our own physical our own physical being for somebody. It's happened throughout history. Just average everyday human beings have have stood up against oppression and actually have died because of it. Look at look at in in Palestine. Look at Rachel Corey. She stood up against the bulldozers that were coming to bulldoze the, the, the houses of the Palestinians. She stood up and she, she had a bulldozer, bulldozer come over her. And as she was dying with blood around her, she gave up her life to defend the rights of other people. As a human being, she gave up her rights. As she laid there, her body crumbled and broken and blood coming out and the pain she must have been going through. All through history, people have stood up and said, I don't believe in this, what you're doing. I think it's oppressive. I'll stand up for it, against it. And, and, and they've actually sacrificed themselves. And they've actually been tortured. And they've actually had excruciating physical pain placed upon them. And they've died in that condition. Can we raise them to be God? So this is what happened to Jesus, peace be upon him. It looked as if he was dying on the cross. This is what people saw. So then the people that, that killed him, they were ones that didn't believe, that didn't want to believe in his message. Doesn't God want the people to believe in his message? Isn't, isn't this what we should be doing, is believing in his message? The ones that killed him were the ones that, ones that killed Jesus. It looked, it looked like they killed Jesus because in, in Islam, we, the Quran tells us that it appeared to be Jesus but that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, God Almighty, actually had answered Jesus' prayers and, and raised Jesus, peace be upon him, to be with him. That's why we believe Jesus will come again. What sense does a sacrifice make if a sacrifice comes again and, and is alive again? When you sacrifice something, you're giving it to someone else that doesn't have it. And then you never get it back again. That's a sacrifice. God Almighty, who is, who is, who is the creator of time and space and creator of the universe... That, that, that the universe has existed for billions and billions and billions and billions of years. That creates the sun, who in one second, in one second, the energy released from the sun is more than has been used in all of humanity. This is just one star in our galaxy of, of millions of stars, in our universe of billions and trillions of stars, created by the Creator. What does time mean to the Creator of it? What does three days, what does seven hours a physical pain on a human being on a, on a what does that mean is he, to a, to the creator of of that that created the time it would be like me taking a penny out of my pocket giving it to my friend for one second and taking it back then why do you go through all this suffering and pain and and why do you go through all this why does the woman go through pain of childbirth what isn't there meaning individual meaning in any of these things that we go through 